guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Friday and you know what that means. It's time for a, another roundup of my weekly face fails and finds and we've got some of everything this week. Without babbling on too much guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. So my first favorite this week, I have been wearing this non-stop. This is by a jewelry designer named Victoria Emerson. This is her like zodiac necklace that she put out. Basically it is, let me go ahead and like zoom that in for you guys. Essentially these are all the constellations that are associated with the particular zodiac sign that you are. And I am an Aries. I like to say that I wear this necklace as a warning. When I say that I'm an Aries, that should serve as a warning to you. I'm all kinds of crazy. Also, um, if I end up with lipstick on my teeth, please forgive me. I am not accustomed to wearing a red lip, but we will talk about this red lip in a second. Anyway, I do, I love this. I kind of wear this alongside like other necklaces. It stacks really beautifully. It has a little bit of visual interest, but without kind of overwhelming my outfit. And I have stuff that kind of has this like medallion coin shape on it. And I find that if it's too gold or too cheap looking, I kind of start to look like I'm in Run DMC, you know, because I also wear like the big like gold aviator like eyeglasses. So I'd be really careful with that kind of stuff um, for some reason. Like that's just the look that I start to lean towards and it's not what I'm going for. So this is just subtle enough and I think it's really pretty and it's got little Swarovski crystals in it. I'm not even really a crystal girl, but like I just thought this was really pretty. I saw it on Instagram and I just ordered it. So I'll link these things below. They're really not very expensive. I think this is like 25 bucks. Another fave and I've really come back to this. So. I can't really do gel on my nails. It just wrecks them. Like I have really thin, really brittle nails and the, you know, the gel looks great. And then once they take it off, the acetone just destroys my nails and it takes such a long time for them to kind of come back. And people are like, oh, well you just have to keep doing it. They still end up breaking off. And I actually have really beautiful nails. At least I think so. Like they're very like long and pretty. But if I, you know, do anything mean to them, they just break off and look really ugly. So if I let them just grow naturally, they just get really long and pretty. And so I have found this color. This is the Fairy Taylor in uh, the Essie Gel Couture. And usually the Essie Gel Couture, I don't suggest using the actual polish with the actual top coat. Like I, I like to use the top coat on top of everything else. Typically it gets too thick, but I really only do like one coat of this. And then I put this on top and it's really shiny. It lasts a long time. And it's so like foolproof, you know what I mean? Because it's just such like a, neutral, pretty, like, you know, see-through tone that if you get it on your cuticles, which I do, I'm licensed to paint nails professionally and I'm terrible at it. And these are really, really easy and really forgiving. Plus they've got this really big brush on them, very much like the, uh, the new OPI ones. I say new, you know, it's probably been five years since they updated the brush, but still that big fat brush really helps just kind of like make a quick coat of it. It dries really fast and I really appreciate that about it. And I just really love this color. I do have like a whiter shade that comes off really white and it just, I don't know, it looks really unnatural. This is like the prettiest shade on kind of my pale skin. And it just sort of looks almost like, you know, my nails but better or like, like gel, you know what I mean? Like a really pretty gel top coat, but I don't ever want to get like acrylics or anything like that. I garden, I do a lot of things with my hands and I'm just, I'm not that extra. You know what I mean? I don't want fake nails. They drive me insane, but I do like having my own long nails. And this is really good because when it comes off y'all, I know this sounds like it probably isn't a good idea and I totally understand that like this goes against most of the common wisdom associated with like taking care of your nails, but when this comes off, it like peels off in the shower with hot water. So it'll be like a week and then I can kind of see the, the edges start to lift and I can just be in the shower and I'll just pull every single one of them off and it doesn't damage my nails. So it's better for it, I think, than like an acetone nail polish remover or something like that. I know it's not ideal, but getting nail polish off of your nails isn't ideal regardless. So this has been the least damaging and the longest lasting for me and I just really, really love this shade again. It is Fairy Taylor. I don't, I get it. Fairy Tale, Fairy Taylor. It's a stretch. All right, let's talk about this red, y'all. So earlier in the week, I did a video about Tone Cosmetics. They are a lipstick brand that's not sponsored or anything like that. It was just something that came up on my Instagram. I search cruelty-free makeup and stuff like that to kind of see emerging brands because I really want to feature that kind of stuff on my channel. I don't always want to just feature like the Beccas and the Tatches and the Anastasias of the world. Like I have kind of steered clear of that in the past, but recently they've been coming out with some cool stuff that I know 
I would want to know how it performs so I've just been featuring it for that reason because it's like actually stuff I'm genuinely interested in like for example I'm not trying the Tarte stuff right now because I'm genuinely not interested in their mermaid of the sea stuff like it just doesn't appeal to me at all so I digress this is a concept that helps you essentially find your ideal undertones of a beige and or like a you know a neutral and a red and I have never been a red lip wearer you guys I would love to pull off that French girl thing you know what I mean just like throw on a red lip and mascara and walk out the door but people would probably think that I was like a lunatic if I did that because most of the time a red the formula runs all over my face and gets everywhere and frustrates the daylights out of me and typically it's the wrong red. I tried a lot of reds. They end up being too orange or too purple or too crazy and I will say, not that this is something you can just go pick up today on the side of the road kind of thing, but getting my new teeth really helps with wearing reds because my old teeth were very gray and very yellow and very see-through and I felt like a bright lip just kind of was like, hey, why don't you just focus on like the least appealing part of my face? Um, so now that I have, you know, better, better teeth, I feel like this really, you know, helps, but I, I love to be able to recommend a product to somebody that I'm not like, hey, this worked for me. Why don't you go buy the exact same thing? It's like, this worked for me and they can customize it to your needs. Like that's what I like about Curology too. That's, oh boy, that's, that's down the line. We're not gonna talk about that today. But I'm a big fan of these customizable products. Products that find your ideal match and this finds your ideal match and their little test works. I really, really appreciate it. I like the nude that it came with, but I still like my Thrive nude better. Sorry. I mean, it's pretty um, and I will continue to wear it, but I, you know, if you just have something you like better, you're probably gonna end up reaching for that. But this is the first red that I found that's just like knock my socks off. I love the color. I love the formula. It is so beautiful. If you guys haven't tried these, which you probably haven't because this is definitely not like a big blowing up brand yet, I don't think. They're $15.50. This formula is insane. The, the red. I mean, the other one is fine and I'm sure they're kind of the same formula, but there's just something about the pigmentation of this particular like group of reds. It's just ridiculous. Like, I don't know. I just, I put it on and it's just like, whoa, bam. Like, it's just so easy to work with. It's so beautiful and it smells like vanilla and I'm into it. So I've been really enjoying this kind of channeling my inner Taylor Swift. Do I want to do that? Is that something that I would even want to do? Lots of people wear red lips. Okay. Bombshell. My inner bombshell. I'm not even sure that Taylor Swift is someone I aspire to. Kind of a fail from this week is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Omrezzi highlighter. You guys, I'm actually really interested here because, okay, it looked like a spray over at first, but it's not. It's really beautiful, but I feel like this was formulated to look good in the pan first and foremost. You know what I mean? It's almost like a thumbnail of a video. Like this is the thumbnail. It doesn't matter if you end up really liking it because you already bought it kind of thing. You know, it's kind of a clickbait title because you guys, that's really nothing special. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting out like with my nail, I'm getting like a lot of it. And like, that's just, as these things go, not a spectacular knock my socks off highlighter. Like this just doesn't blow my mind. It's not even necessarily my aesthetic to want to wear a really wet highlight, but the way that the internet has been blowing up over this highlight being like, this is the most blah, 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 blind the haters. It, even if that was the look I was going for, and sometimes that would be the look I was going for if it really did just kind of like snatch my cheekbones, but like, it's not, it's really underwhelming. Like that's a very underwhelming highlighter. <laughs> it's not worth the money. And I just, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's really just like, it's not creamy. There's nothing kind of blurring about it. It's just, I don't know. Go for a Becca highlighter. This just, ugh, just didn't do it for me. A, an old favorite that I have come back to, and I think I'm going to repurchase the large size bottle of this. So I got this as a set a really long time ago and she's almost empty. And I killed the spray bottle a long time ago. This is the Fresh Life fra fragrance. Fragrance. Personal fragrance. This is Fresh's fragrance called Fresh Life. And it is what I would call the white t-shirt and jeans scent. You know what I mean? And I am that girl. Like I love to put on something kind of effortless. There is, and I, oh boy, I could rant on this. So many people are sensitive to scents and so many people are sensitive to like a cologne or a fragrance or something like that. And for every person who's sensitive to it, there is someone who is very insensitive about it. Someone who is just a jackass about wearing too much perfume. Like you guys, if you can smell yourself, 
through the course of the day, you're wearing too much personal fragrance. That goes for guys too, not that there are any watching this video. But like the worst thing that you can do, flight attendants, is wear a fragrance when you're getting on an airplane. Don't do that. It's so rude. It's so inconsiderate. Like I just, I can't with these people who just like obviously are wearing perfume instead of showering. You know what I mean? Just like lay off, especially these fl flight attendants, I'm sorry, flight attendants shouldn't wear perfume. Flight attendants shouldn't wear perfume. You're stuck in a cell essentially with somebody and then you're going to radiate migraine energy at everyone around you. It is so freaking inconsiderate. So anyway, I like to wear things that are very low key. You know what I mean? I don't mind if someone gets close to me and they're like, oh, what is that? That smells nice. Or if I kind of like, you know, catch my own fragrance like on my clothes or something over the course of the day, totally fine. But the musky scents or something like that, like my strongest fragrance that I wear is the Byredo Seven Veils and it is very like musky and vanilla -y and like deep. And I will actually kind of like pull my shirt like this and just go one time on the inside of my clothes. And that's it, you guys. There's a reason that that perfume costs like $220. It's because you don't need very much of it. And I will still kind of like catch a really nice note of that fragrance over the course of the day. It really lasts, but you don't need to douse yourself in it. And so I am very, I try to be very considerate with my fragrances. And this is one of those very considerate fragrances where you wear it and like people just are like, huh, what is that? Like you smell good, not like what's that perfume, you know? It has notes of, ooh, yes. Like, um, oh, I love it. It like reminds me of fall for some reason. I think I bought it in the fall. And so it just kind of reminds me of like the early days of my YouTube channel, which is just like, I was so excited. I was just like, I don't know. I thought it was gonna be some kind of like, you know, teeny bopper YouTuber and I ended up being not that at all. But I don't know, it has, it's floral. It's very floral, but not rosy. I do like rose, but it's more jasmine, I would say. And, and I'm just kind of pulling that out of my head. I actually didn't read the notes online or anything, but it's very like, if you're just kind of walking in the spring and you smell jasmine, that's kind of what it smells like. I don't know. It might have a couple of sort of like creamy notes to it, but not really. And it's definitely not a flower bomb. It's not sugary. It doesn't have that like sugary, sweet kind of cloying young thing to it. It's white t-shirt and jeans. Like it's just a very beautiful everyday fragrance and I've just gotten back into using it. I just think it's so refreshing. And so I will probably go and buy it. There's like, I think they still do it at Sephora. I bought this years ago, but it's like a set of the spray and the rollerball and it's like $55 or something. As fragrances go, that's pretty good. You know what I mean? Like I, we were just talking about Byredo, like these things run the gamut, but that's a really good price for a fragrance like this. And if you're looking for kind of a nice lightweight just chill every day, like nice fragrance. Um, I wear this, I wear Chloe Roses. Chloe Roses is also really just kind of lightweight and chill. Um, if I'm feeling really like waspy, I know I have different like moods, but if I'm feeling really waspy, I will wear um, Ralph by Ralph Lauren. It's just very like, I don't know, it's just got this like chinos kind of thing about it. And then I also have the, the Byredo and that's when I'm feeling like sultry. <laughs> Usually like if I'm going out to dinner or I'm wearing all black and it's like really cold outside or something like that, I'm like, yeah, seven veils, you know, like that's, I don't know. It's nice to have a fragrance for every mood. I also love Tory Burch Absolute. Um, her regular fragrance doesn't last and it just kind of bothers me in that sense. It's kind of just not enough, but I love the notes of it. And so the Absolute actually has just a little bit more intensity to it. And so you can just kind of get a little more bang for your buck. You don't use as much, but it lasts over the course of the day better. And I just think it's a really pretty kind of like, again, a lightweight fragrance that's a little bit more grown up. So if you guys are interested in any of those things that I just said, those are kind of my, my that's my perfume gamut. <laughs> Still absolutely loving the Bye Bye Foundation from It Cosmetics. I wore this to the pool yesterday. I wore it all day. You guys, this is such a versatile foundation because I wore it yesterday with literally like, I don't even think I put blush or anything on. It was just like a bronzer, highlight, mascara. That was it. You know what I mean? I don't even think I put a brow on. Like. It was just this glossy, glowy Cinco de Mayo, you know, I was like out just, you know, kind of bopping around in a sundress. You know, we went out to dinner, went and had Mexican food and stuff like that. And even when I got home, I was just like, man, my skin looks awesome. Like it looks awesome. And it was definitely in combination with this, the silk canvas underneath this, like, mm, yes, yes. But I just, I really do. I think that this is really fantastic, especially for summertime. It really 
holds up throughout the course of the day on me and it also has SPF 50 plus UVA UVB because I am not trying to get any more melasma. Okay? It's me and my hormones, we don't need that much sun. So I'm not really interested in getting a tan on my face. I can always kind of like fake that until I make that. And so I, I like to keep everything just more hydrated and protected because <laughs> Botox is just not what I wanna do, you know what I mean? I was actually, no shade, but I was among some people yesterday and they were talking about you know, their Botox. And these people are like, you know, 30, 31, 32, 33, whatever. They're talking about like who their favorite people are to go and get Botox with and I was like, I have twice now made an appointment to get Botox and I've chickened out both times. <laughs> There's something really freaking scary about it, you guys, about like atrophying your muscles. I just, I think I want to do like microcurrent and strengthen those muscles like Jennifer Aniston instead of bombing them and destroying them with botulism. You know, because when you do it for so long, yeah, the results look nice at the time, but you eventually atrophy those muscles and they forget how to like support themselves and then your face gets even more saggy. Plus, this is what kind of spooked me is because I went in for my, my chemical peel and I was going to do just my 11s because I'm getting married and I just, I hate, I hate them. But the chemical peel, ended up being so good that it like tightened everything up and I was like, that's fine. I don't mind having a little bit of, you know, age. Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm 31. Either way, I, I'm an expressive person. I want to look like a human being at the end of the day. And the chemical peel was absolutely gorgeous. Like, I, I love it. I still love it. But she tells me, like the, the Botox lady tells me, she goes, well, I just need to tell you that sometimes if you do the 11s, your eyebrows will kind of then, in response, lift. And I was like, excuse me? And she was like, yeah, you know, just kind of sympathetically, if you freeze this, these will just go me. And I was like, no. No, I don't want to do that. And she was like, hey, you, don't want to, you don't want to do it? I was like, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep my $200 and go, you know, get a facial. You know what I mean? Like, it just wasn't, I just, that wasn't where I was at. I just realized, like, I'm so sensitive to change on my face that, like, we're just gonna keep everything where it is. And so I think that that stemmed from me talking about foundation, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of try and be preventive more than, you know, needing all of that nonsense later down the line. So I've heard a few of you guys talk about the Rifa versus the new face. I've gone looking at the refas, and you guys, there's so many of them. Do I need the $360 one, or do I just need the cute little, like, $150 one? Because I'm looking at the new face, and, like, that guy's, like, 200 bucks. Like, you know what I mean? That's as much as I would have paid to get the Botox that I chickened out for. So, um, like, just let me know. Let me know if you guys have experience in these things, because, you guys, I've been, I'm really rambling here, but I've been watching so much Sonya Esman. She's that amazing, I love her. She's like Russian, Canadian YouTuber model. And like, yeah, she's young, but I like her approach to things. I like the way that she thinks. She's kind of nuts and I'm kind of nuts and I just appreciate that about her. Every thing that she has ever recommended for my skin that works for her skin has been a game changer for me. She's the one who recommended the Sunday Rally products. She recommended the light stim. She recommended the high frequency machine. She, I'm pointing to it because it's on my desk. She has recommended the new face and I'm like, well, girl, you know, over the, over the months, I guess you've influenced me so much. I've literally bought like almost everything that she uses and I'm probably gonna end up buying the new face if you guys don't tell me that like the refa is like light years better and which one to buy and it's actually cheaper or something like that because that girl, she's got, I mean, here's my thing though. She smokes cigarettes. What? What? Why are you gonna go do all this skincare and then smoke cigarettes? I just, I can't. It doesn't shake out. The logic's not there, but that's none of my business. My business is my face and I really want to try the microcurrent. I think it's going to be very fun, very effective. I've been loving the light stim. I cannot wait to share the results with that with you guys ultimately, but the light stim is cool, you guys. I kind of want the wrinkles one too, even though she is a lot more expensive. Saving up my little Amazon points for that. Anyway, yes, tell me which one I should get and I will get it. I kind of don't really want to spend the coin 
to compare them because that is such a long-term experiment. We're just not there. That's just not what I wanted to do. So anyway, y'all tell me, tell me which one to get and I will get it. A secret winner this week is this mascara that I'm wearing right now. I know, to pull me away from my Thrive Cosmetics is to say a lot, but you guys, <laughs> I cannot reveal my secrets just yet, but this mascara is <gasps> blowing my mind. It is gorgeous. Um, I'm really, 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 really excited about it. I can't wait to share it with you guys. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. Another thing that was weird slash a find this week was the Rachel Dolezal documentary on Netflix. Did you guys watch that? It is wild. Um, Netflix has been just doing some real cool stuff lately, but that documentary is so weird. Like, it's so weird and sad. My goodness. But, like, I don't like to watch a lot of movies, but, man, I love a good documentary. I don't know. I'm just, I'm nosy. I like learning about people. I like, I like understanding people's weird-ass psychology. And I totally understand, because I studied it in college, that, like, there's no such thing really as a documentary. Because, like, by virtue of the fact that someone's filming something, you're seeing it through their point of view. They're editing what you see. You don't know the full picture and everything like that. But... I think that this documentary does a pretty good job of like not really narrating. They just kind of let her drive the narrative and it is very interesting. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff where you're just like, I'm nosy, I want to know what's going on in your life. Remember Rachel Dolezal? She was the woman who was like the president of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. And then it was revealed that she was actually white and all proverbial hell broke loose and continues to break loose and essentially this woman decided she was going to make a documentary about her like pretty much starting at that point you know like this is coming out now but I think that she started filming it in like 2015 so it's very interesting it's if you remember that and you were curious about it it's very topical like I don't know it's all mind-blowing thought-provoking and the black women in that movie are they just oh my god they say some things that you're just like, I stand you, I stand you so hard. So regardless, it's cool to see kind of like these really powerful voices of very empowered women and also kind of understand the greater narrative around it. And it also just makes you think, you know what I mean? It just makes you think. So wherever you shake out on that logic, I mean, it's still just a very good watch. It's very, very very interesting. So guys, as far as things that I have kind of coming up here, we're going to be talking about skincare at some point when kind of I, I consider the results to be in. I'm thinking about trying a few other things. Have you guys seen the Vita Liberata, the clear bronzer, like not bronzer, self tanner. It's just like water. It doesn't have any stain to it, which I think is really interesting. I also ordered a bunch of stuff from Morphe to kind of try some of their products out, um, like their concealers and stuff like that and blushes and whatnot. So keep an eye out for that if that's something that you're interested in. I've just seen a lot of stuff coming out lately and I am curious to know whether you guys, you know, what you guys are interested in seeing reviewed. So definitely. Oh, also that NARS lip powder palette very interesting. I'm not even sure if I'm like into lip powders, but that's what I find intriguing about it is because I'm like, I don't really know what that is. So guys, if you see stuff kind of coming out on the horizon and you're like khaki, dude, I want to know if this works like makeup wise, let me know. Callie is so good about that. <laughs> Very one of my viewers. She always messages me on Instagram. She's like, what does this do? This looks like something you would like. I would like to see this tested. And she has definitely, you know, influenced to the things that I end up reviewing. God, we were counting down to that Sunday Riley uh, foundation release. And I'm sorry that she ended up being kind of disappointing, but I did appreciate the heads up on that because it's just, I can't have eyes everywhere. And you guys are so cool for kind of like, you know, telling me what you want to see. And then we, we do it. We do it. So guys, I hope that you guys had a really good week. I did not. <laughs> I had a rough week. Um, I watched a squirrel get killed right in front of my eyes on Wednesday. Um, they came and cut down all of our pomegranate trees behind our house on Thursday, and so I cried about that. Um, I'm trying to replant them from cuttings from the trees because it's just such a shame, but like Mike is already looking for real estate because he's just so bummed out that we're not going to have any more privacy anymore and no more hummingbird habitats and people suck generally. We understand that we, the, the fact that our house is even here is because it probably destroyed another animal's habitat and that totally sucks and humans are the most invasive species, but like I just want to run away right now. Like I want to just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm very sick of people this week. So. Um, 
understand we are we were in the wake of a Scorpio full moon um, on Sunday and so that was just like that has been just setting the tone for my whole week and also Taurus is just kind of rough for me and then we are actually like up until the 15th Uranus is still in Aries and it's been there for seven years just kind of like putting this like hammer down spotlight on me like it's just been really like I don't know I just ugh. And so on the 15th, it's a new moon. Uranus is going into Taurus and hopefully everything improves. I'm just trying to kind of white knuckle it right now. Like it's, it's just been a really rough week. So I hope that you guys are having a pretty good week. I hope that you guys have a good weekend. I just, <sighs> good vibes y'all. We gotta stick together. It's just not, it's just not always easy. You know what I mean? I'm just, I appreciate you. I appreciate your positivity. When you put that out into the universe, it really does make a difference. So guys, let's just go ahead and embrace the sunshine. Let's just welcome spring and summer in. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love that if you did. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.